universities, public universities, management and governance of public universities, or University Council, or the Ministry of Education, or Chancellor, or political appointee, or vice chancellor, or political, like, all those things. And then now we have what we have in the country as our public universities. Wait. Let's talk about their governance. The University Academic Staff Union is one what brings together the academic staff of universities and they come together as a union. Now the Nairobi branch, the University of Nairobi branch, the Secretary General is called Dr. Maloba Wekesa. He is our next guest in the Situation Room. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning. Uh, Welcome to the hot seats of the Situation Room. Thank you, Eric. Make yourself comfortable. It's not really that hot. It's not hot, <laughs> eh? Okay. Uh, it's it really just good. Things. Yeah. <laughs> Quite warm. Very good. It's supposed to be comfortable. It it's is. It's be uncomfortable. No, 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 no. City. Yes. Why don't you give Dr. Maloba the day's proverb? Our proverbs for the whole of this week are from the country of Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. The content of a peanut is enough for two friends to share. Not to eat to their fill, uh uh, to share. The content of a peanut mm. is enough for two friends to share. Yes. Dr. Maloba? You know, I actually have something nearly equivalent. I thought you were mm -hmm. going to say, I actually have a peanut. <laughs> 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 I was ready for it. <laughs> but this one is more domesticated. I don't know if you've heard about it. Uh, mm. Tell us, please that a village can share the tie of a grasshopper i haven't heard but it makes perfect sense uh -huh. exactly yes I, I think it speaks on it's the same thing it's the same thing isn't just it? the bokinabes grow peanuts <laughs> your village <laughs> no people hunt a grasshopper <laughs> same something but, but i think for me um it just shows the boundless nature of magnanimity mm. you can never be magnanimous enough that's it mm. and you shouldn't be you should, i don't think so you should I think, not uh, put a limit you shouldn't put a limit goodness should never actually be limited because being magnanimous basically that's just it mm. indeed yes share as widely as possible city what do you think uh I think the good doctor believes what he's saying, and if he didn't, he wouldn't have gone into the politics of, uh, <laughs> of the university. Mm. It is a thankless task. That's why he's in that. Yes. He, he, the, there are jobs you do not do if you are not inclined in a certain direction. Yes, there's, a, a, there's an element of, yes, somebody's pursuing a career, yes, ambition, but there is a larger element of service. There, there, there are people who are that way inclined. Uh, yes. Good. Uh, actually, it's true. Uh, if you go back to the history of Wasu, the nature and the formation of Wasu was based on altruism. Because then I have to go back to people like William Mutunga, you know, at the sacrifice of not just their career, at their that lives, time, it was actually. a sacrifice of their life. Mm -hmm. So it will be extremely decrepit of me right now if mm -hmm. I am in this position to imagine mm -hmm. that I should not eschew the same kind of values. Mm -hmm. It would be totally inappropriate. What does WASU stand for? What does it do? What's the mandate of WASU? It's Apart from just union. campaigning for you know the welfare of its members, what else? That's the common day to welfare. Mm -hmm. The only problem is that people narrow it down. To mm -hmm. When you say welfare, they reduce it into a salary <laughs> component, <laughs> yes. which is, I mean, it is so far from the truth. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are a labor union, and obviously, labor unions have certain <laughs> specific tasks that they have to perform. Mm -hmm. But to reduce, especially a labor union of dons, to reduce it into a salary component, it misses the forest by the trees. <laughs> How did this diminishing of mandates begin? Because usually, by the time an opinion of something has been formed, there must have been a habitual um, show 
of something that would have reduced it to that. And I think that forms the base for the conversation that we'll have today. Because why think of you in a certain way if I have not seen something that would then make me think that regularly? You know, frankly, if I have to speak the truth, mm. and which sometimes I'm very hesitant of, is then I'll end up talking about my own teachers and some of the missteps that they made. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, I'm very hesitant to do that because over the period, especially as Kenya, you know, grew out from getting independence, moving all the way to the first president, then when Moi took over, we, we know what happened. Mm. And we know the compromises that people had to make. Mm. Hard economic times sometimes, you know, inclining people into certain directions, people need to survive, then they end up making mistakes. And, you know, it's very unforgiving. Society is quite unforgiving, especially when a professor makes a mistake. Because okay. you expect the professor to know better. Mm. So when he does make a mistake, and the mistake is reflected way into the future, those of us who come, and they have been taught by the same professors. Mm -hmm. Now, I was brought up in that generation where your senior is always right. Wait, Malin, just tell us. <laughs> I, I'm very hesitant yeah, to say, it. but the thing is this, there were mistakes <laughs> made here and there, and uh, those mistakes, well, someone has to rectify them. What are these mistakes? Mm. Because you have to rectify something that you identify. What are these mistakes? If you go back into what Ndu is asking, yes. at what point did the entire mandate of Uasu get reduced to just thinking these dons won't appear right? Well, basically is when, <clears throat> if you go back in time, 1963, who are the highest paid employees in uh, Kenya? Teachers. Yes. Now, teachers at the highest level are who? Principals. Lecturers. Mm -hmm. No, you uh, teachers. You start with teachers, you go to principal. Then from <laughs> principal, you go now. All the way. All mm -hmm. the way to now. Yes. To the professors, isn't yes. it? Mm. They were actually earning higher than uh, permanent secretaries. Yes, they were. Yes. So at what point did the reverse happen? You see that? Mm -hmm. uh, when that reverse happens, and then someone notices, no, this is not right. Something must break. Yeah. And then the agitation begins. And then the entire public, because of the numbers, we are quite few, mm. because of the numbers, then a lot of heat is generated. And the discourse sometimes is controlled beyond the lecturers themselves. Mm. Mostly the media is focusing only on that. Some of the media people might not even have the history. Mm. Well, the benefit now moves to the politicians and the politicians start saying, I thought this was a calling. You see that? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was a calling. What, what, why are you asking for money? You, 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 this is a calling. You see that? Mm. And then the narrative is built. They are abandoning their calling. Mm. They are asking for money now. And uh, well, it is sustained over time. And it's unfortunate. But Uwasu is much bigger than that. Okay. Sure. Yes. Have we seen Uwasu over the years talk about some of the things that we're seeing coming out? Let's use the Presidential Working Party on Education Reforms and the proposals that they've made in the last you know, couple of weeks. Let's use that as an example that could probably feed into this what you're speaking of. Usually, a body will be known for either what folks are saying about that body or what the body itself is speaking out on one of the big issues that comes out is own source funding for universities right have we seen wasu let's say in the last five years in the last 10 years come out robustly speaking about how universities need to be made as institutions of innovation institutions of exportation of knowledge and understanding so that by the time a proposal like this comes out, we hear, actually, the unions have been talking about things like this. They've been trying to move for such kind of change to come about. But if we hear that over 10 years, every time we heard Uwasu speak was, they're saying, we're going to strike if salaries have not been increased. We are going to strike if these allowances have not been paid. Do you see how that narrative then would be formed? And I'm asking, do we see that conversation is around some of the things that are needed at the university level 
as opposed to the things that you would not like to color the image of the union okay now this question is valid but it, it is missing the entire crux of where the problem is wasu is only a social partner okay mm. It's only a social partner. What you're saying is you're putting me on the spot to explain why I'm not able to do one or two things. No, no, no. I'm asking if the yeah. union has been involved in speaking out after some of these things. I am not asking you why things are happening the way they are. I'm saying in the social construct in which you have been constituted, have we seen an adding to the conversation on a social platform? That's all I'm asking. Okay. All right. Now, hang on. Let me, I got this now. Mm. You see, you are asking on the social construct. But me, I want to begin from the structural point of view. How are we structured first? Before we go to the social point. Mm -hmm. Because that is just a minuscule part. How are we structured? The right question would be, how is the university actually structured? Public universities, how are they structured first? Mm. Okay, so, so that us. this mm. social aspect can now be able to be seen to manifest all right you see that as mm -hmm. you've seen that that's the question that you'd like to answer mm -hmm. let's answer that question how uh -huh. is it structured exactly and um it's unfortunate that uh, this has to go back to 2010 if i have to just move as quickly as possible i can omit all the history and simply start with the promulgation of the new constitution mm -hmm. okay the promulgation of the new constitution heralded quite a lot of things okay it was a fresh start for the country mm. a lot of things had to be re-engineered okay mm -hmm. now the first among the things that had to be re-engineered was something called the universities act mm -hmm. it had now to conform to the, to the new constitution you see that mm -hmm. i'll come to the social aspect but let me start from there first mm -hmm. the architecture of how universities are created okay so the universities act was uh, inaugurated around 2012 so that it conforms to that constitution now unfortunately a lot of those things were experiments a lot of them like how do you select councils of public universities mm -hmm remember now you see you are now enacting a new constitution and you now must come up with a master a master plan mm. the population is uh, increasing there's a youth bulb a bulge okay education needs to be expanded we need access by our younglings coming into the universities so definitely you form that structure okay that university act came into play so that it conforms with the constitution like i said it was an experiment so what now, what different what additions or differences did it have oh yeah so number one is the council and the constitution of the council you've just mentioned i'm going i'm going slowly fast i mm -hmm. want to explain you know now as a lecturer we always begin uh, the point, uh, and I don't want to use any jargon. You start with the known and move to the <laughs> yes. known. <laughs> okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So what do we know? There was a new constitution. All right. We've there are public that. universities. So you need to create a superstructure we of have. how these public universities will be structured. So we you have come up with an that. act. Okay. Okay. Once you come up with an act, then even universities which are established, like the University of Nairobi, is the oldest university. Mm. Okay. That means it had to draw now a new charter. You see that okay because the old charter was not conforming to what the new constitution had wanted and what that university act had stipulated so that means you had to do a new charter like the university of nairobi the charter was 2013 it was signed by margaret kamar okay and it was inaugurated mm -hmm. so that means now you have three levels the constitution then below that constitution is the university's act then below that university's act is the university charter that university charter is the law. It is what now creates now the new University of Nairobi that now conforms to the constitution in accordance to the act by the 